Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Dorbin number 16AZ. This is a piece of interlocking flange type zinc uh, weather stripping. Zinc is the base material, and the 16AZ is exactly this. It's a it's like a rib strip, really. It's a piece of roll-formed material, and the 16AZ is representative of the exact profile of the piece that you're seeing here. Now, the straightforward definition of a 16AZ is that it's interlocking weather stripping that would be used primarily on a door, like a residential wooden door, wooden frame application. And it's interlocking because the two pieces will nest or interlock together at the lock side and at the header. If you found 16AZ in our website, you will notice that there is a cross section of what a door would look like um, in a typical installation. And this video is to help clarify a typical installation. So this is a short sample piece is all it is uh, for purposes of this video. Let's go over the dimensional properties of it first. The thickness of the zinc 0 0.032, 0 0.032. Overall width with the flange 0 0.403, 0 0.403 overall. Overall height, 0 0.425, 0 0.425. Thickness of the rib itself, it's not uniform because it's, it's roll formed. I believe it to be roll formed material. I'm quite sure that it is. 0 0.096, 0 0.096 thick here. Okay. And I think, I believe the caliper is the best tool that the woodwork, it's not the router, a woodworker's favorite tool, it's the caliper in my opinion. Allows you to know really exactly what you're dealing with. Now this weather stripping, back to the door example, is used in a door installation. In a single door, or in a double door, uh, or in windows, I suppose, you've got a hinge jam, you've got the header, and then you've got the lock side. If you draw your attention to that cross section, showing you the hinge side, what happens is that 16 uh, AZ is nailed to the jam after a slot has been cut into the edge of the door, so that when the door if my elbow is the hinge edge of the door and a slot is cut in the edge of the door, that slot is going to seat over that rib portion, creating an interlock, so to speak, with the door. And there's only a single piece installed on the hinge side, whether it be a single door or a double door. On the hinge side, there's a single piece. In a double door, uh, pardon me, at the header, whether it's a single door or a double door, you will have two pieces that will be nested together. And if you notice the hinge, pardon me, the head and lock side diagram that's there, you'll see that you have to rabbit the edge of the door itself at the, at the header and at the lock side so that you can nail this to the door itself so that this makes contact with each other just like this. And it's, it's supposed to look like that naturally. So when the door closes, it'll close up right against that, making that sort of completed finished look. At the header and at the lock side, there's always two pieces involved because they nest together. If it's a double door, two hinge sides, so two single pieces there, and at the header there'll be two pieces. In a single door, you would need a total of five lengths to do the job right. In a double door, you'd need a total of four lengths to do the job right. So in a 3070, a a like a three, let's say a 3068, a standard three foot by six foot eight door that you'd see in a residential application, you'll have an 80 inch piece for the hinge, you'll have two 80 inch pieces for the strike, and you'll have two 36 inch pieces for the header, five pieces total. And that's just how that works. 
interlocking weather stripping, while it may not be very effective when it comes to thermal or R value, um, because it's metal touching metal and it's metal nailed to wood, it is incredibly effective at mechanically locking the edge of the door so that you really prevent and retard the transmission of air uh, and, of course, moisture. And to a lot of folks, uh, interlocking weather stripping is considered the higher caliber of a way to weather strip a door because you get that positive mechanical interlock. This material is also known to be significantly, outrageously long lasting in terms of durability. And really, the only time you'll see this material fail is when the material has been inadvertently damaged. Um, you can imagine unhanging the door and then resting it on its side and it tips and bends the zinc weather stripping over. That's when the stuff really fails. With enough use, the holes where the nails pierce through will begin to ovalize. Um, but generally that's also a condition of a misfit door. Over the years and decades, a door is going to sag, etc. And with interlocking weather stripping, you do need to maintain the fact that it needs to be square and plumb within the frame. But the payoffs in terms of interlock weather stripping are, because of it being so effective at reducing the transmission through the opening, are so obvious that um, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to go with another solution once you're aware of it. If you were to add an interlocking threshold to your door, now you are interlocking on all four sides of the door. And whether you be in a northern climate like Chicago and, get, and can get an outrageous quantity of snow, or you are in a southern or a southwestern climate like Arizona where you're probably not going to get snow where you live, but you do have the possibility for scorpions uh, to come in. That's a real thing. Here in Florida, don't have any trouble with those, but, you know, this is Florida. There are critters everywhere. Interlock will help certainly eliminate the possibility of intrusion for things other than just pure weather. And interlock would be very exquisitely uh, made for that. Now, obviously you're going to have to do some work on the door uh, to make it accommodate the weather stripping. Uh, a slotting tool, a router, router bit. You'll be able to manipulate the header, uh, pardon me, the top of the door and the lock side of the door. Now, when you order this material, the 16AZ, you have to tell us if whether or not you want the nails because the manufacturer will only sell the nails in multiples of an ounce. This is what the nails look like, zinc nails. Uh, select nails option. Depending on the size of the unit that you're looking at, the, the price to add the nails Will, will change. If you're looking at buying a couple of 30 inch pieces for a window repair, the select nail option would be an ounce of nails. But if you're looking to do an eight foot by eight foot opening, the cost to add nails because you've got more length will, will be greater. Roughly speaking, there are 65 nails in an ounce. The manufacturer would tell you one and a half inch center to center on the nails. I and most everyone else that installs the material would agree that that's a bit too close and that you could easily make that three inch. I have some people that say ah, every six inch. I have some people that say ah, every two inch. The point is this, there are 65 nails per ounce. Calculate how many nails you'll need based on the quantity of pieces and then the length. Let's take that example of a three foot by six foot eight door. So you've got 36 inch wide and you know you're going to need two 36 inch pieces. So 36 times 2 plus 80, 80 and 80, 3 80 inch lengths, 80 times 3. Divide that number by your center to center. Let's just say what the manufacturer says, 1.5. That would mean that you need to have Two hundred and eight nails. So two ounces isn't enough. Three ounces is too much, but that's the only way you can get it. So in effect, you would need three, you would order three ounces of nails, or alternatively, you would just select nails required. Now, let's say you were going to do ten of those openings. 
and you were going to do them at 3 inch center to center. So now each kit is going to need 104 nails. You are going to be getting plenty of nails based on the manufacturer's formula to where you're going to have lots of nails left over. So you might say to yourself, well I need 10 openings um, and I'm probably going to have 500 nails left over. Just a guess. You might order six of them with nails and you might order four of them without nails. So think, think that. Think about that. The quantity of nails and the upcharge for that is based on the 1.5 inch. So since that's a fact and it's a fact that there is basically 65 nails in an ounce, you will be able to calculate roughly how many nails. I wouldn't be stingy and try to cut it too close. Um, but nonetheless, you see the point where you can save five, ten, twenty dollars on a larger job just because you don't need to have those nails literally hit the garbage. So that's the nail discussion. The tools for installing this material, we're not power tool experts, but obviously a router with a common bit will be no problem. There are slotting tools that exist. I'm not aware of anyone who makes them currently, but I know that Porter Cable once upon a time had a slotting tool and I had a client ask me about a year ago to help him find one. And while I was able to sell him the slotting cutter, he was able to, uh, he was able to find uh, a used tool through an online marketplace um, and worked perfectly. Okay. The, there is a link below this video to uh, the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Dorbin products that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. If you have more than an occasional need for weather stripping, I would urge you to review the Dorbin catalog because, first of all, their name is synonymous with weather stripping since literally before World War II in the regional area around Chicago. Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana. You're going to know Dorbin. They've never really branched out and gotten very famous outside of there. I don't think you're going to bump into a lot of Dorbin in California or Minnesota. Um, but their material has been brought into some specifications in, a, in one of the two giant national uh, drugstore chains. So their materials requested anywhere where they're building these drugstores. So the name is out there. But for us from that part of the United States where their, they've been, their home is, we'll know them for interlocking weather stripping, whether it be zinc or, bra or bronze, V-cushion, spring bronze, for doors and windows, uh, entire assemblies for old wood original double hung windows, the sill rib strips, the uh, jam portions, the meeting when the window is closed and that lower slash sash you close it, your nested hooks between those rails. And then, of course, Dorbin has an, a comprehensive offering of the regular sort of weather stripping, the thresholds, the door sweeps, the perimeter gasketing. They do a good job with solid architectural bronze material. If you want a, uh, a six-foot wide interlocking oil-rubbed bronze made of solid architectural bronze uh, threshold and door sweeps and weather stripping, for that matter, Dorbin would be a great choice for that. Um, and... I'm partial to Dorbin, and it's because of decades of my family purchasing from them. They're a relatively small company when compared to others, but what they do, they do it pretty much as good or better than everyone else that they compete against. If you have any questions on the Dorbin 16AZ interlocking style weather stripping or any other Dorbin product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.